In this lesson, I'm going to show you my second 24 bar chorus of original soloing over the chord changes to Horace Silver's Song for My Father, which is in the key of F minor. If you recall from the previous lesson, I did a sparse, bluesy, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan meets Jimmy Page meets Dickie Betts type of approach, which, you know, no one could ever fault you for, for going easy and sparse and melodic. Now I'm going to do the opposite and shift gears into some double time phrasing using primarily 16th note lines and take a more of a jazz bebop approach of really trying to outline and get inside each chord change with various scales and arpeggios. And I'll even use a classical device known as pedal point, which I learned from Johann Sebastian Bach. And this is all in an attempt to bring the solo to an exciting climax. So here we go. All right, so over the first two bars, F minor nine, I'm doing this neat pedal point lick off of the fifth of F, which is C, but I'm using the lower neighbor tone, I'm going. The idea behind that was some um, box toccata and fugue in D minor, it's an organ piece. You're really just going. But by throwing in that lower neighbor tone, B, off of the C note, you get a constant stream of 16th notes with the higher note melody notes kind of popping out, which is cool. Starting on a downstroke, and then all these higher notes are all picked with upstrokes because that makes for an easier string crossing pattern, you know, outside the strings picking. So it's... of a stretch there, then you slide, and then over the E flat 13 chord, E flat 13, okay. I'm targeting the seventh of E flat 13, is D flat. And then a third, G, and that creates like a ninth sound, E flat. I'm outlining the chord. Another big stretch there. So you're doing a, a little bit of a shift here from third position to fourth position, or actually technically it's fifth position. And then you shift up again, one fret, do this hammer double pull off combination, and then a slide. 
That's interesting because I'm playing over E flat 13, right? And, but I'm thinking momentarily, I'm thinking B flat melodic minor, which is. You play that over E flat 13, you get E flat Lydian dominant. You get the major third, one, two, three, the sharp four, and then the flat seventh of mixed Lydian. So it combines the sharp four of Lydian with the flat seven of mixed Lydian. It's a neat sound. Okay, then I'm using um, the natural fourth there, interestingly, A flat. Chromatic passing tones, a little walk up. And then some pull offs. And then I walk down to the root of the D flat 13 chord. This is downbeat of bar five. Slide, slide. I'm always saying target a non root chord tone, such as the third, fifth, or seventh, but you can't go wrong with the root either. It's going to sound right. It may not sound as harmonious as if you're hitting the third, but in this case, it felt like the thing to do. It really, you know, defines that chord. And then halfway through bar five. Now, interestingly, here's another Lydian dominant situation. I'm playing over D flat 13, but I'm thinking A flat melodic minor, which is D flat Lydian dominant. I'm playing A flat melodic minor, starting on D flat. But by going, it's like an A flat minor type of idea, right? But over that D flat bass note. And then I slide down to G, which is the fifth of the C chord, C7 sharp five chord. Now we're going from D flat, C, Okay, this is interesting. I'm doing an ultra dominant pattern here. Here I'm targeting a third of C, which is always the sweetest sounding note to go for, right? That's interesting. I'm thinking of this shape, this G flat triad shape, which played over a C bass note. It sounds pretty wild. It's like C7 flat five, flat nine. And that, that comes from the um, C half whole diminished scale. That's one of the two altered scales. And that's from the C super locrian, which is D flat melodic minor starting on the seventh C. So as opposed to the diminished, which is has an extra note, the natural fifth. Super Locrian, also known as diminished whole tone, has all your altered tones. You get your flat nine, your sharp nine, your third, your flat five, your sharp five, your flat seven, flat nine, sharp nine, three, flat five, sharp five, flat seven root. And then that resolves nicely to F minor nine. So I'm kind of thinking of a contour thing here, you know, I get this. The way that resolves. So again, that resolves on C7, sharp five and bar six. Pull off, pull off. And I'm resolving to the fifth of F minor nine. This is in bar seven. That kind of outlines the F minor sound, right? With a grace note slide. Now what I do in bar eight is, this is kind of like a turnaround. The original progression, it just hangs out on F minor nine for two bars, you know. What I'm doing and what a lot of people do, a lot of jazzers do is, they'll play F minor nine. And then throw in that five chord, five ultra dominant. It creates a nice sense of a swell of tension 
leading back into the F minor 9, which is the second A section, the second eight bars, being in bar 9. So in bar 8, I, there's a rest on beat 1, and then I go. That's, uh, again, a C diminished whole tone, a.k.a. C superlocrian, which is C sharp or D flat melodic minor starting on C. And then I'm targeting this note, C, which actually now becomes the fifth of F minor 9. Then in bar 9, I begin the second 8-bar A section, and I'm taking a similar approach to what I did earlier. If you recall earlier, I went... I'm doing a variation on that. I'm doing the syncopated rhythm. That's two sixteenth notes, and each time I play it, it's displaced back a sixteenth note, or ahead a sixteenth note, so it's called rhythmic displacement. Those are some juicy notes. I'm targeting the, uh, the ninth of F minor 9, and that's actually the eleventh. So together, that kind of paints a, uh, an F minor 11 sound. You get over a little F bass note. And then in bar 11, I just kind of go with that idea. I get this little third shape here. This is over E flat 13 in bar 11. I slide into that note again. That's, uh, I'm outlining E flat 13, again using Lydian dominant, but here harmonized in thirds. You know, if you were to start on E flat, the root, and the third above it, and walk up that scale, well, the scale, first of all, is played in two-part harmony. And again, that's B-flat melodic minor. So you look at the B-flat melodic minor, but you think of uh, E-flat as being a root, you get E-flat Lydian dominant. So. A sharp 11 in there and the 13th. Here's the root in the third and the seventh and the ninth. That's a nice little thing you could take that shape. There's some interesting rhythmic activity going on there. It's a syncopated rhythm. You had different notes fall in the downbeat. And then in bar 13, I'm really thinking about that chord, D flat 13, which is here or here, getting the third and the seventh, getting that kind of bittersweet tritone sound. And here I'm thinking this is like another classical device called interval expansion, which gives you contrary motion. So when the chord goes from the C, sorry, D flat 13 to C7 sharp 5, I'm going. Instead of going, which I could have done, would have sounded fine. I decided to go up instead. So I'm going from the third of D flat, now to the sharp four of C7 altered, and then hitting a the seventh. So I'm getting this kind of sound. Down here, B. D7, flat 9, flat 5, or flat 9, sharp 11. Then as I resolve to F minor 9 and bar 15, I do this thing where I'm thinking of this like seventh, major 7th seventh interval. It has kind of a spooky, hauntingly beautiful sound. So it's... That's in the downbeat of bar 15 over F minor 9. And then I do this neat descending sweep in two octaves. What that is, this is a, an interesting improvisational device. I'm playing an A flat major 7 arpeggio over an F bass note, which gives you an F minor 9 sound minus the root. The bass is playing the root. So by playing this, 
That's A flat major seven. If you play that over an A flat bass note, you get. Play it over an F bass note, you get F, a cool F minor nine sound. Okay, so a sweep. You could uh, use either index, middle, and ring, and pulling off the, to the middle, or you could get the pinky in there. Half the time I do it differently. I... This is both upstroke sweeps. And that's the end of the second A section. Picking up in bar 16, we're going to the B section, which is two bars of E flat 13, two bars of F minor 9, E flat 13, D flat 13, C7 sharp 9, F minor 9. Okay, so I do this chromatic walk down to the third of E flat. Third, you can't go wrong. I rely on that more than probably any other chord tone, you know, just kind of as a foundation, as a, a structural framework to build lines around. Okay, so I'm walking from the fifth of E flat, B flat, down to the third, and right back. Targeting the seventh, D flat. That's an interesting arpeggio. G minor seven flat five. Played over E flat gives you a cool E flat nine sound. This is getting into upper structure harmony using this shape. That shape is G minor seven flat five. Played over E flat, it gives you that cool E flat nine sound. Some chromatic movement, a lot of passing tones. Okay, so targeting. Dancing around a chord tone. Upper and lower neighbors. And then in bar 19, there's a little pickup note. I target the third of F minor nine, which is A flat. Chromatic passing tone with the pull off. That's a neat device. Rhythmic displacement, once again, here um, taking this idea. The second time I do it, it shifts metrically to a different part of the measure, which creates an interesting little twist. And then some pull offs, outlining F minor seven. Actually, I'm using A flat major seven again. Over F to get an F minor nine sound. But that's interesting. I'm using the major seventh there. Always thinking, you know, head, like in chest, you know, you gotta think head or think backwards in this case. F minor nine, D seven sharp five. I'm hearing that leading tone. Then this is a downbeat of bar 20. That's walking up F Dorian mode. And then skip up to the ninth. Some chromatic. And then in bar 21. Now I'm on E flat 13 again, playing E flat Lydian dominant. But I'm hitting a non chord tone on the downbeat. That's an out note, but it's okay because it's a lower neighbor tone. In classical music, they might, I think they might call that an appoggiatura or a leaning tone. And then it goes to D flat 13. I'm playing D flat Lydian dominant. From bar 20 into bar 21, it's. flat, Lydian dominant. Played in here. Then here's a climactic part of the tune, part of the solo. Bar 22 over C7 sharp nine. 
That's neat. That's going after that F sharp or G flat triad over a C bass note gives you that really tense, dramatic C7 flat 9 flat 5 or C7 flat 9 sharp 11 sound. And then I go for the sharp 5. It just feels so satisfying when that super tense altered dominant resolves to F minor 9, resolving to the fifth of F minor 9. So bar 22. I'm not too particular about the pick strokes here because there are a lot of pull-offs. Generally, I get this weird style where I begin on an upstroke if I'm alternate picking, but not always. And a kind of a bluesy thing over that final F minor 9 chord in bar 23. Emphasizing the ninth and the third. And then again, in the closing bar here, bar 24, I'm doing that turnaround chord again, C7 trap 5, and then shifting to a different rhythmic gear, eighth note triplets, and doing C sharp, I'm sorry, C diminished whole tone, also known as C super locrian. And then that, resolving that to the ninth of F minor 9.